Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the NS9 post game show powered by Permani Brothers. I'm your host, Anthony DiNardo. With me, we got Tyler. Tyler, we're running it back, baby. Another back. victory. Pirates are 3 and 0 oh to start the year. You know what that means, right? More what are they on pace for? An undefeated season. 162 still. victories, baby. 162 and 0 oh, still. First place Pirates. I want to start off. I want to start off by saying this. Actually, before I start off by saying this, as you guys know, again, the Pirates won. When the Bucks win, you win. So go ahead, comment your hashtag raise it for your chance to win two Permani sandwiches. Again, all one word, hashtag raise it for your chance to win two Permani sandwiches because the Pirates won. This is what I want to say. You and I, two out of three post games this year. Mm -hmm. You and I, two victories this year. Yeah. You and I have never seen the Pirates trailing while doing a post game show. No, That's all I got to say. I mean, I'm not saying it's like a coincidence or anything, but like for some reason, people get sandwiches when you and I are on. We're here for you guys. We're here for the people. That's all. That's it. This is why we're the favorite hosts. Screw Jim. Forget Neil. Doug. Uh, sorry, Doug. You're catching strays today. Yeah, well, <laughs> or Doug. But no, this is like really exciting stuff. Honestly, listen. It's three games. We talked about overreactions, right? But has this not been the most fun, sloppiest baseball you've ever witnessed? No, uh, it looks like a. Honestly, it looks like college baseball right now. Like there are errors everywhere. There's some really bad at bats. There's a lot of big moments. <clears throat> this is what baseball's supposed to be, maybe without the errors. Yes. Let's start. Let's just get into it. Jared. Oh, Jones. you talked about overreaction, didn't you? I did. Let's do that. Oh, okay. So the greatest pitcher to ever <laughs> exist isn't here yet. Paul Skeens made his debut in Triple A. He's that guy. But the second greatest pitcher to ever exist, Jared Jones, did make his MLB debut today. Ty Ty. Buddy. Yes. Wow. Um fantastic, phenomenal, electric, at times dominant. Like what word do you want me to use there? Because he was as advertised today. Probably better than All advertised, of honestly. That part. That part. Now, I understand three earned runs were given up. Mm -hmm. What do we talk about for like the majority of this this series so far? Well, if the defense behind the pitcher wasn't that bad, maybe, right? Like that's kind of what was going on today, too. Three earned, but listen, he had five total base runners, three hits, two walks. There was sloppy defense behind him. Tyler, 10 strikeouts, 46% yeah. whiff rate. Yeah. He was electric. You said better than advertised. Absolutely. Yeah. He really, you, I don't think you can ask for more from Jared Jones in, in general. And here's where the overreaction comes in because now I'm thinking like this guy's like a legitimate number two. I, <laughs> a lot of the issues with Jared Jones did come up today. Like, him seeing a team another time through the order um, going a little longer. We saw the velocity kind of tick off a little bit. He was sitting more 96, 97 later into the game, but he was still just getting swings and misses with that fastball. The cutters just dynamite. Like he was a, he was in the zone all day. Like, I don't know what yeah. more to say about him. He, I don't feel like he really got himself into trouble in like, three ball counts, everything that he showed today just looked really, 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 really good, man. It really did. I, I want to say this. I think the issues that we think Jared Jones presents, right, which was going to hold him back this year, although, look, again, like he looked really good in spring. He looked really good today. He said he filled his own. To only, only two walks. He was throwing a lot of strikes. Guys were, were swinging and missing. But I think that was the biggest thing as well today. Like he was in command all day long. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was 
like the big game, the big moments, and he lived up to it. Like a lot of guys buckle on it. Like it's a debut, and this is their first time under the big lights. Although maybe we talk about the hitters not hitting well in Miami. Yeah. I guess it's not Marlins Stadium anymore and, and Lone Depot, right? For him, maybe there's not a whole lot of pressure because it was just in Miami. So maybe that helped out. I don't know. But like he didn't succumb to that. I mean, he looked really, really good and he lived up to it and he was attacking everybody. Yeah. Like I mentioned before, he just didn't get himself into bad counts. He was ahead of a lot of guys. The velocity drop off as the game went on, it's something he's just going to have to work on. Like maybe you don't throw a hundred in the first inning and taper off after that. Like it's, it worked today. It's fine. The stuff is fantastic. You can tell why he's the Pirates' number three prospect. He's he's a dude out there. Like this guy's a major league pitcher. In some Correct. capacity, he is a major league pitcher. Correct. Absolutely. You see right now, like the the bottom floor is an electric reliever. But if he can sustain lasting through his outing, you also see how he can be a pretty solid rotation piece. And he showed that today. Like 80, it was 89 pitches he threw today, yeah. first time out. That's the other thing, man, the efficiency. He was so efficient today. Like, really, yeah. he he probably could have finished that inning there. And honestly, he might have been able to go one more at that point. Like, And if the defense treats him a little better, he, this we might be talking about a seven-inning outing from him. Right. Um, but he was just really efficient. Not much negative to say about his outing. No. Makes a good point here. His ex dog was definitely off the yeah. chart today, also. That, He's got that. He has. Yes, it. he does. It's like just the just the quotes he had before the start. Just like listening to the dude, he seems to have that. You like that. I like that in my pitchers. Yeah. And like you saw it from him whenever earlier in the game, the, the score was a little bit tighter. And there were some spots there where it could have gotten away from him and he just buckled down. Like those are the types of spots, the guy on first base, one out, where he's able to get a strikeout in a big spot there. That's what separates you from being a starter and a reliever. He he was just able to really bear down today. Yeah. That slider, that like you said, he was basically fastball slider. Now, the Marlins, and also, like, the Marlins lineup, not the most desirable right. major league lineup that you want to have. So, like, I get that, right? And that's why you see, I mean, it was electric. I'm not taking anything away. Still want to see see some more of this. You want to see him go yeah. deep in the games. He did everything that you really would expect and ask for today. And, and, again, above that. So, excellent, excellent outing. For Jared Jones, it doesn't help anyone who's suffering from hopium right now because the Pirates are undefeated. There's no reason they shouldn't go 162 and 0 this year, just based on yeah. seeing so far. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Again, like I don't know. We want to go even further to Jared Jones. We probably could, but we also have another rest of the show to continue with. Yeah. Um, I do want to make a shout out though. New member, Jathan, Jonathan Caval. Jathan. Appreciate it. Uh, Cavell, Caval, Cavell, probably. I'm terrible with names. Thank you. John. Um, appreciate, appreciate everyone else who's also been a member. Last night was awesome. Um, but yeah, so Jared Jones, amazing out there. Yeah, just really strong performance. Let's let's get to the offense. I want to get to the offense too. Let's keep this thing going because that was legit today. That really yeah. broke out. There was what six hitters with multiple hits today. Yeah. Um, I don't know the exact number, but just in it general. Was, so Connor Joe had three. Brian Reynolds had two. Cabrian Hayes had two. O'Neill Cruz had two. Yeah. Jared Trillo had two. And Michael A. Taylor, Tyler, yeah. had two. By the way, Michael A. Taylor, Tyler, hitting 333 on the year. Tyler. Yeah. Okay. A lot of good yeah. stuff at the play today. 16 hits. Yeah, a lot Four of walks, walks still, too. Like, not as many as yesterday, but... Th does it not seem like the Pirates have found a way to get it done in three different ways at this point? Like, opening day, we saw the home runs. Yesterday, they did it by walks. Today, they just strung together hits. Like, we've seen it in all facets at this point at the plate. 
today they were just able to string it along. Like they moved runners over, limited the strikeouts again. Really, that's been one of the more impressive parts these last two days for me. Lozardo kind of got to him and put him in a bind on opening day. But aside from that, yesterday we didn't see much strikeout wise. Today, nine. I mean, it's up, but not outrageous. Like they're putting the ball in plays and situational oh. hitting has just been really good. Yeah, like like nine strikeouts in a game isn't terrible. I mean, if everyone had one strikeout, you know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, what else are you doing, though? And again, if they're going to collect hits like this, I'll take nine strikeouts all day long, every single game. It's really when you're getting into like the 12, the 13, the 14, mm -hmm. right? And they're not stringing that and together, the hits and such. Like, that's when it's a real problem. But nine strikeouts, especially in today's game, um, with the amount of at-bats they had. I mean, again, they had 43 at-bats today. Yeah. So nine strikeouts there. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, but like what I want to say too is so again, it is also the Marlins rotation slash bullpen, which is a little bit taxed, which also going into tomorrow's game, even more tax. What we talked about yeah. yesterday, like it's even more tax. This is all setting up nicely for the Pirates tomorrow as well. Uh, because their bullpen's looking pretty healthy mm -hmm. um and fresh. But yeah, so like you know, this isn't the lineup's not all that good for the Marlins, and the pitching side isn't really all that good with the Marlins outside of Lazardo because of the depth and issues they've had with the injuries and such. So, you know, like you would expect them to hopefully get some hits, but they've done it. Like, this is the thing, like when they're doing what they need to, you know what I mean? When it is a bad pitcher out there, they're getting to them, they're scoring runs, right? You're, they're, they're doing what you need them to do. They're they're finding ways to win. The first time they had to come back last night and today. Like you said last night, that they were on the throat, and today they made sure as well. You know, like they took the lead out early and they kept adding to it, and they won nine to three today. Um, so like they're doing everything they need, and yeah, like it's not even just the one home run that's helping. I mean, they're just stringing along hits. They're they're making it happen. Yeah, they're kicking the can. They're kicking the can. The Ohioisms. Management loved kicking the can, and now the lineup's kicking the can. I mean, that's all they're doing. Though. They're just they're passing the baton, kicking the can, whatever you want to call it. Like they're they're just moving on to the next guy. Everybody's, you know what really is making me happy at this point is it feels like I'm watching a lot of unselfish baseball. And I, what I mean by that is we saw it late in the game with Jack Sawinski as well. In a spot with two strikes at two two count, it's a slider that's off the plate. That's a pitch that Jack Sawinski's taken last year. There's a good chance he's getting rung up on it, but there's guys in scoring position. It's going to score a run if he can just lift the ball and put it in play there. He gives himself up. They get a run out of it. Stuff like that we're seeing a lot of. O'Neill Cruz going the other way with two strikes, and it's just a blooper. There's little things happening right now that I'm really, really liking what I'm seeing. Let's talk a little bit about O'Neill in that sense because we kept talking about the approach. Now, I have to bring it up. He hasn't looked good in many other ways. Mm -hmm. Defensively, I mean, we talked about the arm. He's really shown it. The base running, he's shown it. A little bit here with the glove, he's shown it. You know, he had the bobble today, although he showed off the arm, what that arm can do. Now, if he just didn't bobble it, you don't have to show off that arm. But in his instance, he showed what the arm can do, and it was spot on, so there's that. But He's been sloppy in a lot of ways, but he's come through a lot at the plate. And like overall, he's helped this team win ball games. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. The good has definitely outweighed the negative so far. Um, but yeah, like he looks like he's just doing all the right things right now at the plate. And today, yeah. two more hits. We're talking, I mean, I think it's going to be small sample. Like until we hit May, I think small sample. So understand that. But again, like right now, Oh, no, Cruz batting 357. Like the guy's collecting hits right now. Yeah. I'm um, just to not bring up Pirates 1 3 9 3. So I'm not going to bring up the defense of O'Neill Cruz today, but we did see him run. I believe he got the third on it. it was, uh, I can't remember exactly who it was, but somebody doubled. He ended up at third, but he was off on the pitch there. It was Trio. So, right? Was it? Yes, Triel it was Trio. That's right. But it was good to see him run a little bit there. We saw him score on a contact play that finally worked. Yeah. Um, there were de and also just so O'Neill Cruz in general, and something that, that we talked a little bit about in spring training of just the personalities that the Pirates have collected. 
a more serious group that kind of just nose of the grindstone type of guys. That big inning where they score three runs is really led by O'Neill Cruz beating out a double play. There you go. Do we see that previously? I don't know. That's a th- that's a good point. Because, I mean, I ironically joked about this yesterday, but Henry Davis did it yesterday as well. Yeah. So, stuff like that becomes contagious. And again, like stuff like that is exactly why we were talking about year after year about bringing in some vets. Yeah. Now, they don't really need it as much from the vets. I mean, there are some vets there, but like you said, like the guys they haven't bringing in, like the Henry Davises, and you know, they have that mentality. And this isn't to say, like, you know, they got to find guys that everyone fall in line with, but. That's why you want to have this nice mixture of people and not just a lot of young guys with chickens as a head cut off, like right. not knowing what to do and such, you know? So yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I like that. Yeah. There's a lot of fun loving guys on the team, but you do need some guys that are just going to keep Time the head down and go to work. You need them lunch pail guys. Yeah. And no, you need some there. of them. You need those fun loving guys to kind of take on that lunch pail mentality. And they're there too. <laughs> yeah. It's a good mixture. Like you say. So yeah, that just another thing I wanted to mention is that it just seems like in general the hustle's been there and they it seems like they're playing hard. Could we get to the other guy on the offense here? Yeah. I mean, we talked about Jared Absolutely. Jones and his, his, the way he's looked, you know, pitching today, but can we talk about Cabrian Hayes again? Can we oh, keep yeah. talking about Cabrian Hayes like every <laughs> single day? I hope. This this year presented was the last two months legit from Cabrian? Because like we've seen this in spurts, right? And we all know the rookie season in 2020, what he had, but we've seen like the span of his career, what it's really looked like. And then like the past two you know, months, of course, we understand like where did it come from? There's a discrepancy on like which hitting coach, where, who did what? Nobody knows, but is it legit? We saw a spring, great spring. Let's see what happens in the season. So far, Tyler, Cabrian Hayes looks so so good. 110 today in the first inning, his first hit. I mean, he's hitting the ball so hard, so well. Two hits. So 108 and 110. His exit velocity stay on those two hits. MVP. Brother, he's murdering baseballs right now. And the thing about it, like he's pulling them, he's hitting it back up the middle. He's able to go the other way. Like he. He looks really, really, really good at the plate right now. At this, like, at this point, he's better at the plate than he is in the field. <laughs> <laughs> I saw someone today actually say that. I was like, well, you know, if he could, he could put together defensively, he might get some MVP votes. Right. <laughs> he's finally hitting well enough to be a uh, goal glover. Yeah. Hopefully this is the come the expense of the defense, which I know it won't. But yeah, he, he, he again, like, okay, so let's keep it going. I don't want to jump the yeah. gun. This is all the stuff you want us from Brian Hayes because this literally, like, what he is doing, and we don't expect him to hit 357 the rest of the year. Yes, we do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 462. That was, yes, that I was do. B Ray. We don't expect him to hit 462 the rest of the year. But if he presents this bat with that glove, this is how the Pirates can be that 80 some win team, right? You yeah. can't go into this expecting it, but like if Cabrian Hayes can be this type of a hitter with that glove, you're talking about a seven, eight war player in him alone. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we might've been uh, wrong about O'Neill Cruz being the next MVP of the pirates. It might be Cabrian Hayes because the way he's swinging the bat right now, it's he's playing at just an unsustainable pace, but, Really, he hasn't skipped a beat since he came back last year and just heated up. Like, right. And that was kind of a concern. Was we we've seen it before in spring, where he's hitting the ball hard everywhere. But to see it continue into the season after he finished the way he did, it's hard not to buy all the way in. Yes. Yes. Again, I, I preference. I want to preference everything. This is all early season, all overreaction in a sense, right? We could be looking silly the middle of May, but so far we have three games. We can only base this off three games. And again, like this thing with Cabrian Hayes does go back to last August. 
And so far, so good is what we're getting at. And if this is legit from August on, and, and, and like that's the thing, like nothing about this so far, like is fluky, you know, no. like it really isn't fluky. No, that's what just kind of leads you to, you know, every day to believe a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more into Brian Hayes. And man, oh, if he if he finishes like April like this, we're I'm gonna be obnoxious. Like Brian, so remember, is the greatest player ever. 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 So remember, if you're here, comment, hashtag raise it, because the Pirates have won three in a row. Hashtag raise it for your chance to win two Primini sandwiches, uh, if you haven't already. All one word, hashtag raise it. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's go down the list here. Uh, again, with <laughs> Brian Reynolds looking pretty good as well. Like yeah. His spring wasn't all that good, but whatever. It's, it's Brian Reynolds. He looked good today as well. Two hits, two mm -hmm. RBIs, and a walk. Yeah, I I think I've really liked what I've seen from Reynolds in general. He looks back to the old Reynolds that looks calm at the plate. And also it's something I wonder how much could Brian Hayes being who he's shown to be is helping Brian Reynolds. Because having another guy around you that is actually an offensive threat has to do wonders for you. It's one thing that like this team has certainly lacked on. We talk about, you know, at least last year it got to like about four guys in the top line. Now, of course, when Cruz went down, like, and that, that really hurt that, but you know, it was like, you had about four guys that you could worry about as a pitcher. And after that, not so much. And one of those guys take a day off, then you're down to like basically three, right? This but year also, is certainly deep. And Cabrian is now part of that group. And also when you say worry about him, it wasn't really like a worry. Like you are about Cabrian Hayes right now, where he is murdering baseballs. Like you have That's another fair. guy that, is a legitimate hitter right now. Not like an O'Neill Cruz that, yes, he's a threat, but you had like a week with him, and also he hadn't proven anything yet. Like at this point, Cabrian Hayes is showing to be a legitimate hitter. So even just having another guy kind of carry the load for you has got him just feel so great. And yes. he's he's swinging like it does. Protection. Zlana's got yeah, We're bringing that line of protection back. <laughs> And, uh, and, and and so, again, like, I also want to go down to, I just have to say it, like, Michael A. Taylor really didn't have any spring, any spring. And he, he's, I don't know, again, like he's showing something to me. Even, like, he makes outs, they're loud outs, and they help so far. He's making some contact. Yes, he strikes out, but, like, when he makes contact, he's making contact. I mean, yesterday went, what, 409, stayed in the ballpark because of Marlon, like, the deepest part, <laughs> went 409 yesterday. Um, today again, like two more hits. He also talked about exit velocity, right? He had a 109.5. That's a, five guys hit the ball over 180 miles an hour today by the Pirates. I mean, they were just murdering the baseball, but Michael A. Taylor, one of those as well. Yeah, he had a good day. So, nothing more? No, he had a good nothing day. More? Just trying to serve up this good for him. platter to you. I'm glad he had a good day. Helps Pirates. So, Nothing, nothing so far. Nothing, nothing leaning. Nothing like, hey, maybe I'll eat some of my words. Look, man, it's been three games. We can't get ahead of ourselves. So, so for him, <laughs> it's just three games. I love it, Tyler. <laughs> love it. <laughs> yes, as Cody says, Tyler sucks. <laughs> um. All right. So I want to also talk about this guy here as well. I mean, he did go over five. I'm sorry, over two. You talked about him not seeing the ball yesterday. You got a few comments about how can you say that it's only been two games? He does go over two today, does draw a walk, does draw a hit by pitch as well. So my over is looking kind of good there, Tyler. Uh, Henry Davis, any difference to him right now that from yesterday's standpoint? Um, in terms of the swing, I I haven't seen it yet. And once again, it could just be being at, in Miami, it could be the arms he's seeing. I don't though maybe the next series he comes out and lights it up. But right now, I don't see him squaring the ball up very well. He's swinging through a lot of fastballs. He is doing really well at laying off off-speed stuff out of the zone, which is leading to these walks. So it's nice to see, even if he's not maybe squaring everything up, he's still able to be productive because he's walking at a very good rate right now. 
So I want to say to that is absolutely, you know, and that's one thing, like he, he is a good hitter. He draws walks. Like he does all those things right too. And like, this kind of reminds me of Kutch when Kutch would go through those slumps, which I think like last year in July, like he had a pretty big slump. He still finds ways to be productive because he still gets on base. And that's kind of like what Henry Davis right. is doing in this very small sample. Once again, right. Like he, to your point, not seeing the ball great, not squaring up, but he's still finding ways to get on base, whether just, by late standing there and getting hit or <laughs> by actually seeing, you know, laying off the bat pitches and drawing walks. So yeah, he got on base three times today, two by again, walk and then hit by pitch. Um, yeah. yeah, no hits today. So 16 hits by the entire team, none by Henry Davis. The only player to not get a hit today. Yeah. You just want to see some loud contact out of him at some point here. I think. Hopefully so. Yeah. And I believe in it. It's oh, yeah. I'm it's not like crazy. super concerned by it. It's just, it's the post game show and we got to talk about what we're seeing. So at this point, I'm just hoping to see some loud outs, singles, doubles, probably not triples and hopefully over the wall by Henry Davis. There you go. Might see some triples. I don't know. You saw the speed. Yesterday. He does run pretty well. Like I said, he's got that deceptive, deceptive yeah. speed, deceptive gym rat, that guy, yeah. coach's kid, that yeah. type of guy. Yep. Um, Yeah, like I'm thinking back in the game. I don't. I, I guess let's go back to the, the the bullpen. We'll finish it out. Yeah. You you like to poo poo on Michael A. Taylor? Got that out Ooh. the way. Your your Michael A. Taylor of 2023 was Ryan Barucki. Ryan Barucki goes in there scoreless, point two innings, has one hit, but another strikeout. Um, mm -hmm. no walks. That whip still looking good. I took the under. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, he comes in Hunter Stratton comes in yeah and then like hernandez who got his save is on this team just simply because of ronzi and his paternity he's looked solid to me in, in the outings and then david benard i think the most important thing to talk about yeah with the bullpen especially is david benard did come in i know it was meaningless at that point in time but the fact that he came in shows he is healthy because i think a lot of people were wondering the past two games when he wasn't like available and didn't pitch and such does come in today does pitch uh, one inning strikeout. It was what, 11 pitches, I think. Yeah. I mean, not many. Really efficient today. Yeah. 14. My bad. 14. Yeah. He was under 15. So, Something good to see in case he's needed tomorrow. Um, right. Matt Cass was talking about it on the broadcast. Good to see him command the off speed stuff. He looked like normal David Bednar, which is really. It's really good to see, man, because <laughs> that's one guy you don't want to lose, especially with Holderman down right now. That's a good but point. Really, and, and, in general, right. you don't want to lose Bednar ever. Well, I mean, yeah, like you don't right. want to lose him. Uh, I think this team is in a better situation this year that if you were to lose him, they can recover and recoup. Now, right now with Holderman out, it's a little bit harder. Of course, mm -hmm. Moretta is already out for the year. Um, but I guess uh, the, the biggest thing is the fact that like he didn't have much of a spring because of injury. You hear he's fine. He makes the team, right? And then he's not available the very first game. Right. And it's like, uh-oh, like, you know, red flags up. Why? And, of course, he didn't really have an opportunity to go out there yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly didn't need to go out there today as well. But they get him in there, get him some work. He looked fine. <sighs> Puts me, yeah. I'm sure, everyone at ease. David Bednar appears to be okay. He is pitching in Major League Baseball games. Um, so, yeah, good to see. And he was effective. Right. You can take a sigh of relief there. Yes. Yes. So, and and again, like if you're thinking about <laughs> tomorrow's game, which by the way, Bailey Falter takes the mound tomorrow. Um, could be a bullpen type game. Yeah. He did only throw a 14. Chapman certainly rested. Them. Pretty much the entire bullpen is rested and ready to go. Um, so that bodes well. And especially also coming, I think. Mon no, Tuesday's an off day, right? They play Monday, they're off Tuesday, I think. Still helps out, though. An off day's coming. I believe it's Tuesday, though. Um, Just to fact check you real quick, that would be Sunday. Yes, Tuesday is an off day. There it is. So, so there Strange. you go. So that helps out. So at that yeah. rate, um, yeah. I also, just one more thing to add on that, and that's why the Jared Jones start is really important because you have Bailey Falter coming up tomorrow. 
your bullpen's rested. Getting five and two thirds out of Jared Jones today helps a whole lot, especially when you see the Marlins starter go four innings. They're a lot more beat up than you are. They put themselves in a really good spot to sweep this series here. Right. Fully agree. And here's the thing, too. If the bats are like this, Bailey Falter could have what you kind of think Bailey Falter might give. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're going to score nine runs. That certainly helps Bailey Falter. <laughs> so, right. uh, right. But yeah, so there's tomorrow. Again, Bailey Falter's on the mound. Anything else that you want to talk about with this game? No, I want to give a sandwich away. Let's do it then. Let's do it. So here it is. As, as always, like, where's your last time? If you haven't yet, comment, hashtag raise it. You'll be entered in to win potentially two free for many sandwiches. So I'm going to add it now, Tyler. We ready to do Same this? Time. Let's go. Let's go. Now remember, this takes a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to think someone won it four times. Let's to... hold on. That this is rigged. Wait a wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, this isn't rigged. I promise. But Gabe <laughs> has won two out of the three times so far. Gabe, you Gabe better take a dinner. And Hayes of Permani sandwiches. <laughs> Gabe, you owe us dinner at Permanis. <laughs> um, well, hey. Congratulations, Congratulations Gabe. Gabe. There you go. Congratulations, Gabe. I will give you your sandwiches once again. You don't have to send me your email. I'm sorry, your address, because I, I know what it is. <laughs> um, there you go. I'll get up all the Permanis sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> right. Um, well, there you have it. So I guess that wraps up our third NS9 post game show powered by Permanis. Any last words? No, just let's go get a sweep tomorrow, man. Wouldn't that be awesome? Start off the yeah. year four and oh, and you we got... might be looking foolish with our over unders. Yeah, we might. Or win totals. I will gladly look foolish. And you got Jim and Doug tomorrow, I believe. I think so. Yeah. Sounds right. So there's that. We're out of here. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully with another dub and two more sandwiches. Bye-bye. Peace out, Scouts. Hey, you all. Thank you for watching. I know we try to provide the most entertaining content that we can, uh, and we'd love to spread it to as many people as possible. So uh, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you could take the five seconds to like this video, and subscribe to the page. It helps out so much more than you know. Thank you, and let's go Bucks.